<laughs> All right, hi. <laughs> Sit here? Sure. All right, <laughs> Sam, well, welcome to Japan. Thank you very much. Uh, when did you fly in? Uh, just a few days ago. All right, all right. And I heard that you're going to enjoy the cherry blossoms? Uh, that's, the, that's the hope. We need the weather to warm up a little bit. All right. So first and foremost, uh, everybody, thank you so much um, for coming to Slush Tokyo. I hope you're having a great time. Um, we're, all, we're all enjoying it. So I think, um, hey, I think we only have 18, 17 minutes. So okay. maybe we should start first um, introducing ourselves. You want to do a quick intro of yourself first? Sure. Yeah, my name is Sam Rosenblum. I'm director of global business development at a company called Coinbase, or digital currency platform and exchange, uh, the largest institutional holder of digital currency today with over a billion dollars in assets under management. And uh, today we're in 33 countries and very excited to add Japan to that list later this year. Wonderful. So, um, so to an extent, we're, we're in similar industries. So my name is Mike Kayamori. Um, I'm the co-founder of Coin. Um, we've been around for about three and a half years. Um, not in 33 countries, but we're in seven countries. Um, we do about 10 currency pairs. And um, I think one thing that's maybe a little different from Coinbase, which is one of the largest in the world as well, um, is we started out in Singapore, which is just on the equator. So it's neither north or south hemisphere. Um, but we relocated to Japan. So um, the reason why is starting April 1st, um, Japan is going to be the first um, nationwide regulated um, nation for cryptocurrencies. So unless you are a regulated approved exchange, you will not be able to offer um, cryptocurrency exchange services to Japanese customers. Um, and existing exchanges like ourselves, we have a six month grace period. So within that six months, uh, we need to comply um, or else we won't be able to offer it, it going forward. So the amazing thing is when you just look at it from a global perspective, Japan, which normally is a laggard on a lot of innovation and fintech, is actually one of the more progressive countries um, in the world when you come to cryptocurrencies. But um, I'm very keen to understand how things are in the US um, since you guys have been one of the pioneers um, in this space in, in the US. And I think you guys started from more from a payments and wallet side. Mm -hmm. So if you can talk a little bit of what things are going on in the US, I think everybody's keen to understand. Absolutely. So yes, Coinbase is based in San Francisco, California. The US was our first market. It's our home base market today. Uh, I think we, we do like to think of ourselves as somewhat of pioneers for the US yeah. market in the digital currency space. We have uh, about 6 million users today, um, a near majority of which are from the US. And of course, a very large amount of our trading volume takes place in the US with uh, the dollar and Bitcoin and dollar ether pair. Uh, so one area that the US really stands out in, in my mind in this industry is the amount of regulation from, from so early on. Uh, a lot of competitors of ours uh, that operate in other markets have arbitraged some of the lack of regulation. And that's something that certainly in the US, now in Japan, will no longer be an opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think for exchanges like ours that have, have very, very much emphasized the importance of regulation, consumer protection, anti-money laundering, uh, it will be difficult for some of our other peer companies to, to try to continue operating without a lot more resource intensiveness of their business. So uh, for our business today, we've seen, again, about, uh, about half of our customer base is in the US. Majority of our trading volume is there. And we've seen about 3x growth for each of the past three years uh, in both our customer base and trading volume, and then, of course, revenue as well. So from a regulatory perspective, um, is it all set? So for example, can you operate in all 50 states? Mm. Can you provide a full line of services? Um, is that possible right now or still not? It's a great question. So in the US, financial regulation takes place both on the federal and state basis. 
every single one of the 50 states in the US has their own state banking department. Uh, they issue these things called money transmission licenses. And without those, it's impossible to operate a regulatory compliant exchange, even if you've registered with the federal regulator, uh, which is the US Department of Treasury. So it's a lot of work to, to be compliant, both in the federal and state by state, you know, 50 times over. So uh, this is something that has become a very core competency of Coinbase. And you know, as a company, we're about 140 employees. The largest group of those are engineers, and the second largest group <laughs> are lawyers and compliance experts. So it's a, a very important part of operating an exchange in the US. You're also well funded as well, right? Yes, yes, we've been very fortunate. Uh, we, we've raised about $120 million to date. Some of our investors include Andreessen Horowitz, uh, Union Square Ventures, uh, also financial institutions, even those here in Japan like Bank of Tokyo, Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Financial Group. Um, so we, we've been fortunate in having the resources that have enabled us to hire all of those engineers and lawyers and compliance experts. Yeah, so I think the big difference between Japan and the U.S. is obviously, as you mentioned, in the U.S. you have federal. So this is nationwide. Mm -hmm. And then you go state by state. Mm -hmm. So that's very different in Japan where you go to the Japan FSA, and um, when you're registered, you're done, yeah. right? And we can offer both spot and also uh, margin, mm -hmm. although there's, there's a certain um, amount of um, limitations. Right now, can you offer both of those in the U.S.? Yes. Or only on a limited basis? Yes, exactly. So um, in the U.S. today, for basic, essentially, uh, retail market price trading, um, that is one regulatory body on the federal mm -hmm. side as well as many on the state. But for more complex features like margin trading, uh, this is when you have securities law and all kinds of additional uh, both state and federal laws mm -hmm. come into play. So uh, Coinbase, and more specifically our institutional platform, GDAX, actually just launched margin trading a couple of weeks ago. And in order to do this in a regulatory compliant manner in the US, you have to only service customers that meet certain criteria. And so this is where the US Securities Exchange Commission uh, has not yet led very direct guidance for virtual currency exchangers, and we are being very conservative in our approach. Of course, of course. Do, do you see an uptake in volume? Uh, do you see a lot of people saying, we were waiting for you, or <laughs> yes. how, how is it? Yes, definitely. So we, we did see uh, reasonable uptick in volume, some, somewhere between 5 and 10% uh, given the very small pool of, of users that we're enabling to, to do this margin trading. Um, obviously, we'll scale that up over time and we'll allocate more capital to it over time. We're, we're actually lending from our own equity dollars for this product. Of course, of course. That, that's very interesting because when you look at the Forex um, industry, especially in Japan where retail Forex is one of the largest um, in, the, in the world, there's a, there's a word called Mrs. Watanabe, right? Where the Japanese retail and investors have influence over the global um, price mm -hmm. of uh, 4X. Mm -hmm. um, but in our platform, despite offering full CFDs and margin trading, it's actually only about 30% of our trading volume. Mm. So it's still very much a, a spot-based spot um, um, trading. So maybe after April, when you, you become registered and people are more, people feel more confident and safe about mm -hmm. having their money in these um, exchanges, maybe it's going to change. But obviously, um, I think you guys started out more from a payments and a wallet perspective, mm -hmm. but now you've sh shifted more towards an exchange. Yeah. Uh, what was the like the background or reason behind that? Yeah. So we think that there will be a few distinct phases of development for our industry. Um, and obviously, companies like ours have, have been around for a few years yeah. with a technology that's only existed for eight years. So um, you know, we're, we're the old timers of the industry. I think for our company strategy and how that's evolved over time, we've tried to fill the needs that we see uh, in the in industry, specifically from the infrastructure perspective. So. When we first started, uh, our first offering was a wallet, and this was because uh, there was a, a lack of consumer ability mm -hmm. to securely store a private key. You have the horror stories of people that bought Bitcoin when it was worth a penny per yeah. coin, and then they wrote their private key on a piece of paper that got thrown out with the trash. 
So uh, uh, the wallet seemed to be the, the fundamental need initially. Over time, we grew from there to the retail brokerage and, and now into the institutional exchange, um, all for the same story, which is to, to fill the infrastructure need. And ultimately, I think we would agree the, the addressable market of digital currency will continue to grow by orders of magnitude, and there will continue to be new needs uh, from the infrastructure perspective, and we will continue to grow alongside that. Yeah, good, good. So, he, so here's a question to the, to the audience who um, took the effort to, to be here right now. H how many people have like Bitcoin? Oh, I see a lot on the right. I see yeah, a lot on the right side. Lots of people over here. Uh, good, 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 excellent. Um, I hope you guys bought it like maybe five, six years ago. Then you, <laughs> you're all millionaires. Um, <laughs> but that's wonderful, right? And um, so. Do you guys buy it through exchanges? Is that, is that how you guys buy it? Any, so, any users of Coin or Coinbase in the audience? Ooh, I hope it's, it's it. No, no, do you, do you offer in Japan for Japanese not users? In, not in Japan. I don't think these people are, are necessarily Oh, they're not Japanese. They're not Japanese. They're not Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, th I think what's going to be, when you think about it, right, it, it's, it's amazing where when you look at something like a store of value, Right? Um, it used to be something where it should be difficult to move, difficult to steal, difficult to like, change or mm -hmm. manipulate. Um, but these are all becoming digital. It's becoming, when, when Bitcoin first started, it, 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 there was a big hype in Silicon Valley talking about this is the future of money, the internet of money. And it's becoming, um, it's becoming an overlay. Things are becoming cashless, borderless, right? branchless. And, and it, it's becoming a lot more digital. But what's, what's amazing is when you think about your hard-earned cash, right? putting it in a, you trust an exchange that's not, still not regulated, your hard-earned cash in a non-regulated exchange where there's incidents like Mt. Gox, mm -hmm. incidents like Bitfinex, um, and you still take that risk to, to buy Bitcoin. right? Mm -hmm. So I think those early days, the wild, wild west days are now over. Right? It was a little bit, it started early in the US mm -hmm. where there was already um, regulation both in the state and the federal side. Right. And now in Japan, um, it's going to start this Saturday. So the good thing is now your assets are going to be segregated. It's going to be protected. Um, so it's going to be important because in Japan, there's already, I would say there's close to 20 exchanges. Well. Right, and it's going to be difficult for them to all of them to comply and be registered. So one of the things I advise the audience is make sure that after this um, regulation takes effect, that you select an exchange that is regulated, that's approved, and um, and that's authorized from the in Japan. It will be um, the Japanese government because all even if you're a foreigner. If you live in Japan, if you're a resident of Japan, you need to go and only buy through um, a regulated exchange. So mm -hmm. things are, I think this, the market is going to evolve. Um, now this allows a lot of the traditional financial institutions to come in. And um, it's, it's going to be a market that I think it's going to explode, right? So how do you look at it where you have um, a lot of financial institutions as investors, mm -hmm. MUFJ as one of your investors mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Do you work with financial institutions or uh, how, how does it go? Yeah, so we have two distinct sides of our business, one on the retail, one institutional. Um, on the retail side, of course, we want to make it easy for normal everyday consumers to interact with these digital assets and digital currencies. Um, we think just like you don't know the magic behind the scenes when you send an email or go to a website, you should be able to ha access a global open financial network without understanding necessarily what's happening behind the scenes. So the retail side of our business has been a, a big area of focus over the past five years. Um, on the institutional side, this is a newer side of our business. We launched in January 2015. Um, I think one of the, the big things that has been helpful for us in getting financial institution partners yes. and clients is things like having state-of-the-art security and cold storage, having insurance on our customers' holdings. Mm -hmm. And um, these are the reasons why people are willing to hold you know, over a billion dollars in aggregate with Coinbase. 
because things like Mount Gox, yeah. where you know it's it's been proven over time how dangerous it can be, mm -hmm. depending on where you're holding your assets. So um, you know we're very fortunate to have MUFG, BTMU among our financial institution partners, and we're very excited again to enter the Japanese market and continue uh, collaborating with them. Wonderful. Well, I think one of the things um, for the audience here in Japan is. Go from April, a lot of the traditional Japanese financial institutions will be coming in, mm -hmm. right? Um, but then, are they familiar with Bitcoin? Do they understand blockchain? Do they understand the most recent security around the wallet, multi-sig? Mm -hmm. They don't. So one of the things that we provide as Coin is, um, is our B2B business. So we provide a white label um, business to financial institutions where they already have a customer base, mm. right? Because user acquisition is not easy, right? And when you try to get their loyalty and churn, um, it's not the, it's not the mo most cost efficient way. So we, we also have a B2, B2C, mm -hmm. a direct to consumer, and also a B2B, which is working with financial institutions. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it's going to be exciting times. So I think as a closing remark, um, where do you see um, this industry and maybe five years, 10 years, and where do you see your company within that? Yeah, so I absolutely think the addressable market of our industry will continue to grow, you know, step function, order of magnitude growth. Uh, I think in order for that to happen, there needs to be a mass market interface that again, the everyday consumer or the sophisticated financial institution alike can both access the benefits of these technologies um, I would imagine five years from now, the protocols themselves will continue to be abstracted behind the scenes, and I think uh, top of the line products and services will, will become more and more important. I think Coinbase will continue to evolve alongside this. So uh, historically, we've focused on these infrastructure functions. Mm. I think five years from now, alongside the, the infrastructure we provide, there will also be a uh, mass market interface uh, things that make it easy for people to access. Wonderful. So I think, I think from a, from a Japan, Japan perspective, it's, it's the first year of mass adoption, right? It's going to be a regulated market now. And a lot of people will feel safe um, investing their personal um, wealth in buying these cryptocurrencies. And it's not only going to be Bitcoin. There's going to be Ethereum. There's going to be other cryptocurrencies, similar to many national fiat currencies. There's going to be many types of cryptocurrencies. And Japan is, I'm pretty sure that they are going to, the country um, is going to be one of the more progressive ones in the cryptocurrency space. When you talk with the government, when you talk with the banks, when you look at, when you talk with a lot of companies, they're all interested in embracing this. So um, it's going to be an amazing year. And um, we look forward to having everybody as our customers, oh. right? Great. Wonderful. So, Sam, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And um, I hope you guys can launch your service in Japan as well. Thank and you. let's see if there's a partnership opportunity. Absolutely. All right. Thank Great. you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you.